Hello, my name is Dave, the founder of Halloween Year Round. And today, we're going to review The Little Things. Um. Now in theaters and HBO Max. Um. And if we have time, maybe we'll even stop for tacos. Yes? Why are you being a creep? Because Is this because I, I pointed out to you you look like the guy in the movie? No. This has nothing to do with that. Yo, he really does look just like him. And I was like, this is why you need to get a haircut. <laughs> you look like a creep. Hi, I'm Dave, founder of Halloween Year Round. I'm joined by my lovely fiance, Jess. And we just watched The Little Things on HBO Max streaming until the end of February. So catch it before it's gone. Yeah, because February is a short month. It is. So, right off the bat, um, I know you're a big fan of, like, mystery stuff. Yeah. So, I yeah. thought you were going to be really into this. I was. It oh. was very interesting. I'm not saying you weren't. I'm saying oh. that's why I thought you'd like it. That's why I wanted you to review it with me. Oh, yes. So, from that <laughs> angle, uh, you know, what, what jumped out to you from it? Um, well... Sweet. Are we allowed to have spoilers? Ah, yes. So if you're, we are going to get into spoilers. So if you have not watched it yet, go back, watch it, then come back here. Yes, do it. Continue. So even at the end, when they kill the guy, you still don't a hundred. And like the mystery, like who's the serial killer? Because that's like the like that's basically like the whole movie. Like they're trying to find a serial killer. Um. And even at the end, when they have this creepy guy, this dude, um, and he's like messing with their head, and they're and he's really making them think it's them, but you still don't really a hundred percent. There's no solid evidence that it's him. You really don't know. But, There's a couple like compelling things that make it seem like it's him, but, but he, you still he, don't know. He's messing with them the whole. Like he knows they suspect him. Yeah, and he's just, like, saying stuff and, like, leading them in weird directions to make it think that it's him. He's got a real Charles Manson vibe. <laughs> yeah, but maybe he's just messing with them. Maybe he's not it. Or maybe he is, and he's just messing with them to kind of try to throw him, throw them off. <laughs> so, backtrack. Uh, we started with the end. Right from that opening scene, I think you kind of capture the tone of what this movie's going to be like. Sort of in the same vein of, like, a Seven or a Zodiac. Yeah, definitely. Albeit less stylized than, like, a Seven was, but just... Yo, Seven was really good. Did this remind you of that at all? Uh, some some parts did like a little the, bit. Just, like, the yeah, tone? Yeah, the tone. Mm -hmm. I love how, even from the very start, it gets into it. Like, it's not like... I hate movies that are supposed to be, like, murder mi mysteries or whatever... And it takes like 30, 40 minutes to actually get to the murder. You just want to murder right out of the gates. Like, let's go. Like, like, hey, movie's on. Let's kill somebody. Seriously. Otherwise, I'm like, okay, In the movie. Like, In the movie. Maybe. I wanted a little bit more plot-wise. It, it, it was kind of... There wasn't much in that way. It, it wasn't as overly complicated as a lot of like murder mysteries get. Okay. That being said, yeah, you know, and I told you this while we were watching it, the movie to me, it almost felt like a play okay. where the whole thing hinges upon this like, you know, trifecta of performances. Yeah, I mean, they couldn't have picked a better cast. So I want to talk a little bit about the three of them. So first, let's talk about Denzel. I mean, Denzel is Denzel. Granted, <laughs> he's playing the same character you're used to seeing, but he plays like, tortured soul very, very well. well. That's, like, his thing. And and we find out later just why he is tortured. So tell me a little, how did you feel about uh, Rami Malek, who, what did you say about his face He looks like it? a mouse. I, I will say Rami Malek <laughs> always looks like he's, like, conflicted or in pain. He, yeah. He conveys Something that with his, lips. with his face really well. <laughs> but I thought that was fitting for this character because here... You had, again, like with the trifecta, you had Denzel Washington, who was kind of like, you know, the veteran, very stoic. You kind of know what you're getting with him. Yeah. He, he has a code, and he lives by it. 
And, you know, I know I'm kind of... It, and it was cool I'm, to see Rami Malek in, like, a totally different role than the last movie he was all in. Yeah, you know, like, I... totally he, he Like I said, he plays conflicted really well. And I like that at the end, he's still not 100% sure... If, if what he did was the right move. Yeah, you know, and, and I feel like he's going to live with that for the rest of his life. Speaking of what he did... Well, hang on. We'll, we'll get to that with, uh, as we talk about... You know what I'm going to say? Jay Leno. Jared Leno. So, now, I'm, I'm a horror fan. I love serial killer movies, not in real life. We all know that for sure. So, for, for those obvious reasons, Jared Leto's performance is my favorite. And I'm going to steal this from uh, a friend of ours that we were, we were texting last night, because he was watching it too. He said that this movie was proof that Jared Leto could have been an awesome Joker with a better script and, you know, being utilized properly. Yes. He had potential. To me, he's the standout, and he's sort of like... It's like the scariest, most disturbing thing you can do, kind of like I said with the Charles Manson vibe, is that we don't actually see him do anything illegal. But we see him drive uh, Detective Baxter, Rami Malek. Yes. I don't to just her. bash him in the head with a shovel. Yeah. As you do sometimes when someone's really annoying you. Well, he was like really picking on him like really like get like ta starting it mm. you don't talk about a person's family because he could tell that's what re that's what really because like all the other stuff he was like ignoring or whatever but when he started saying stuff about his family and like I I've, I've watched your family i know i don't they li i don't mind i mean i didn't really blame him for hitting him in the head with a, a shovel now what did you say when that happened oh my gosh and how movies have ruined you yeah so like <laughs> This one, other movies, you hit somebody in the head with the, with a, a random like a bunch of random item, um, hot like hard items, right? Nothing happens. They might get a bump on their head. No big deal. You, you knock people out and they wake up a few hours later. Yeah, just fine. and it's fine. This guy hits him in the shovel once and he's dead. How is that supposed to be? Like, which one is? Because that's actually realistic. Which is the crazy? Which is that's... what he said. <laughs> That's what I mean, is movies make it look like, you know, people take a beating to the head, nothing happens. Unless they wake up a couple hours later but and they get a bump on their head, that's it. In real life, yeah, if you hit someone really hard in the head with a shovel, you could at the very least give them a concussion. Yeah. And at most, cause a brain hemorrhage and they bleed to death, yeah, exactly. you know, internally. So actually, this movie gets the realism better it's just funny but, that it got that response out of you because it was more realistic you're like what no way he's I, dead I, I literally kept saying no -uh, he, no he's not he's just knocked out he's not next dead. next you're gonna see a movie where someone gets shot and dies you're like what no people get shot all the time and just keep fighting <laughs> it's i've seen die hard <laughs> yeah like so other movies who make it seem like oh i can hit you with this and this and this and a couple hours later, you're fine, has ruined what the actual reality actually is. You do know that people don't actually have superpowers, right? Yes, I know. Okay. I'm not talking about superhero movies. Just check. I'm not talking about superhero Just check. movies. Okay? I'm talking about regular movies. Okay, fair enough. So, overall, of the three, I know I said Jared Leto was my favorite. Which of the three performances was your favorite and why? I mean, even though his face is weird looking, <laughs> I did really like Robbie Malik. Why? Why do you say that? Because you kind of got this, like, um, I know, like, even from the beginning, you knew something was up with Denzel. Like, he wasn't a detective. But this guy, he kind of seemed, like, more in charge. And you got, like, he seemed like more things were getting in his head and like you see him kind of go through this journey like he he had a better facade but it was interesting to see that kind of Get stripped away down. yes that's what you I'm know to and and watch him break down internally yes. where denzel he's keeps an onion cool. i knew there'd be a shrek reference at least once <laughs> he's an onion he has layers 
So was there anything you didn't like about them or that you wish had been different? Mm, like I said, there is, like, as much as I like the mystery, there is still a little part of me that would like to know, was he actually our guy? Mm -hmm. But the way they ended it, it kind of makes it okay that we don't know. It because does. Even um, Robbie Malik is still kind of like you see him sitting there outside. His kids are in the pool, and he still looks conflicted. Because he, like I said, for the rest of his life, he's going to question: Did I do the right thing? You know, did he really? Because yeah. he didn't find the other bodies. No, and they didn't. Like I said, they didn't have any actual hard evidence. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he was just a creep. And being a creep isn't illegal. No. Good for me. <laughs> Doesn't make you necessarily the best person in the world, but somehow I still love you. <laughs> hey, that's your choice. <laughs> no, but I, I, I get what you're saying, and, and, and I, too, like the, the mystery element. For me, you know, I was quick to compare it to stuff like Seven or Zodiac. Obviously, it doesn't quite live up to them. No. You know, it is kind of more run-of-the-mill as far as the actual mystery and detective story goes. Yeah. For me, it's all about... It's three really strong performances and a decent story. Not a I bad mean, story. Last night, before we started watching it, when you said who was in it, I was like, oh, this is going to be good. An okay story. So, but it was, but the it was carried by those actors. It was. It, if it wasn't for them, it wouldn't be that good. If, if like, you had was, anyone else in those roles, it wasn't like Seven where it was like amazing or something like that. But it was decent. Yeah, it was. If it was anybody else, it wouldn't have been that great. I'm glad that I watched it. Um, I probably wouldn't have the desire to watch it again. Unless it's to just bask in how awesomely creepy. Jared Leto is. Oh, you gotta watch this movie. If you haven't, watch it and just admire how creepy he is. Yeah. And if you have a fiance with long hair like this, Would you tell like him to get to a haircut. Would you like to go for a ride? Your friend isn't invited. No. Wait, will it be tacos? <laughs> no, not anymore because you don't want to go with me in the first place. <laughs> All right. Um, so... That wraps up our review. Uh, we will be back next week. Next week. With uh, something else. We'll see. As always, like, share, subscribe. All the uh, YouTube stuff. If you don't, Jared Leto will be waiting outside your door to take you for a drive for to tacos. To get tacos and be creepy about it. Just remember to bring your shovel and you'll be fine. Yeah. Or, something, or some sort of... Or self-defense devi device. So uh, stay scared. And remember, every day is Halloween. Woo!